foremost today you'll get the complete detailed review of the vegetarian by Han Khan. I'm sorry if I butcher the name. Um, and yeah, let's just get right into this. First of all, let's talk about the title. Now, I put this book out because it made some big waves in the booktube and book studies community. It won some prizes and it's really well written. Um, but of course I also picked it up because of the title, The Vegetarian. But to be honest, it really isn't that much about that, but more about like psychologic aspects and kind of also relationships. And I'm gonna put this to side now because it's difficult to always hold it in my face. <laughs> um, now the vegetarian is parted into three parts, parted into parts, yeah. Um, the first one is from the point of view of the protagonist's husband, the second one is from the point of view of the protagonist's uh, brother-in-law, so her sister's husband, and then the third part is from the point of view of the protagonist's sister. So we never actually get um, an insight into the protagonist herself, um, but it is all based around her because she's the one turning veg vegetarian. Actually, she is turning vegan though, uh, which was something I realized quite quickly that there's a bit of a mix up between these two, but as I said, it's not that much about that. Um, however, in the first part, we do get descriptions of her dreams, which are the reason why she turns vegan, um, and they are really, really horrible. So I guess, first of all, before I talk about anything else, I have to put out some trigger warnings for this. Not only for those really horrible dreams, which have um, really explicit descriptions of violence and murder and blood and stuff like that, that but also for eating disorders and sexism, I guess. Um, also explicit sexual context and also for like mental health and stuff like that. However, with all those trigger warnings, there also comes a bunch of topics this book touches on. And I thought that was really, really interesting. It was the part of it that I enjoyed the most because it's not only about her turning vegan and the reactions to that from the people around her, but also about um, the Korean culture itself, it's about like uh, relationships between people in general and people in specific. Uh, it's about life, I guess. Um, there are some really, really beautiful sentences just concerning life. That's also a really impressive aspect of the book, that it was really well written in the sense that it's not only beautiful language, which it is absolutely, totally, I get why it got so many prizes and why it's so popular, but it's also really well written in the sense that all those problems, I kind of understood them and I kind of uh, connected with the yeah, speaker, kind of. Even if those problems were absurd and kind of harsh in some aspects, I still felt like I knew what they were going through just because it was so well written. Um, and that's something, that's another reason why I kept going. There were a lot of parts where I was about to put it aside, um, especially with like the really extreme and the really kind of disgusting parts. Um, but the beautiful language and this, yeah, reflection of life uh, just kept me going and I wanted to know what happened next. And that's something where I was a bit disappointed. Um, first of all, with these three parts from different points of views, you never really get a solution to one part, so it just stops quite abruptly and then you get thrown into the next part. And because I didn't know that whilst reading, um, when I got to the second part from the second point of view, um, it took me a bit to get into it and to understand what was happening and to understand that we had a switch in perspective and to also understand um, that I wouldn't know what happened with the first person. Which also means that we don't really get a solution to all those problems the people have in general. It's just kind of a description of her turning vegan and all the effects that has, which are quite a few. 
and it doesn't stop. There is no solution, there is no end to it. It just stops. Um, and at first I was disappointed by it, I'm still a little bit, I still want to know what happened next, but also, as I said, it's a really great description of life. And to be honest, life doesn't really have an end. At least that's what I think. Please, if you've read the book, let me know what you thought and let me know if you felt like this as well. As well, All I know is that the whole time whilst I was reading this book, I kind of just sat in shock. I had goosebumps all over most of the time, but I kind of didn't really react. I'm someone who reacts to books and to literature quite drastically. Like I cry, I laugh, I put books aside if I can't deal with them anymore. But this one just kind of froze me, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I just had to keep on reading and I couldn't really do anything about it because it's just so fascinating and as I said again it's really extreme and it's so extreme that it was too much for me to react to. So to sum up it's really thought-provoking, it's really extreme, it's um, really interesting from a psychological point of view and it's not really about vegetarianism. Again, if you read the book or if you're going to read it or if you're reading it currently, whatever, uh, please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's such an interesting book and I guess there are multiple various and really different um, opinions on it. So please let me know. And I guess that's it. So I hope you always have a reason to smile and I shall see you next week.